Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining this webinar organized by the Malta Enterprise, being the governmental arm that assists investors and facilitates investment for an investment in Malta and Katkuti Kauki Advocates, um, an international law firm with offices in Malta, Cyprus, London, Zurich and Hong Kong. And we assist clients with various legal, tax and corporate methods. Together with me today, there is, as you can see, Anthony David Gatt, who is the manager of the investment promotion team at Malta Enterprise. We planned this webinar to be mainly divided into three sections. We will start off with Anthony explaining the role of the Malta Enterprise and also giving an overview of Malta as a, an investment destination. I will then take over to go into more detail relating to the legal part and the fiscal part uh, affecting businesses moving to Malta with specific emphasis on the aviation industry. The last part, um, Anthony will, will take over again and we will go through the in incentives that Malta Enterprise um, might assist, with, assist um, businesses to obtain and to facilitate the relocation of business into, into Malta. Um, we, during the, this webinar, you, there will be polls, so please feel free to um, give us your opinions so that we next time we also have uh, more ideas to add to webinars like this. And there is also a brochure available which you can download anytime during this webinar. I think we're done with the housekeeping, Anthony, please. <laughs> Thank you for that uh, introduction. I'd like to thank yourself and Kat Kukri, uh, Kauki Advocates, for inviting us today in order to um, pass on this information to all, all those of you who are uh, participating in this uh, webinar. I would like also to thank you for giving us the time to pass on this information. And I would like to start by introducing myself and the corporation that I represent. Basically, Multi Enterprise is the welcoming party for business to Malta. So our job is uh, two-pronged, let's say. The first one, first remit of Malta Enterprise is to help already Malta established business, therefore, uh, be it Malta, Maltese owned or foreign owned. Uh, these are companies that have already a base in Malta and operate out of Malta, but obviously also uh, go out there in the world in order to explain the Malta story to as many people as possible, especially from the entrepreneurial and business world, in order to, to explain the breadth and depth of the economy and also the opportunities here in Malta. As you will um, also understand better through this presentation, the diversification of our economy is a key um, positive element of Malta's economy, diversification in different fields. As explained in the introduction, we will focus today on the aviation industry. Um, as one would expect, the first form of aviation in Malta was in relation also um, to, to tourism, and that has been also expanding. But since a number of years now, Malta has developed as well a very strong MRO sector, maintenance, repair, and overhaul, um, not to mention our reality as, as, as a manufacturing base but obviously we'll be able to discuss that further. Let me start off by uh, introducing the, the presentation and the title that we are choosing to use is that of a, a regional hub, a regional hub for the global aviation industry. The fact that Malta stands where it stands in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea, obviously it's self-explanatory, the element of a regional hub. Obviously, we're close to, we're part of the European Union, which is uh, a major element of, of our success as well. And apart from being part of the European Union, we're close both to North Africa, to the Middle East, and then on a maritime front, we are uh, exactly there in the middle of one of the main trading routes across the Mediterranean. But let us start by giving some figures. The next slides, the next four slides are your usual economic uh, indicators that one always looks at in order to gauge a particular economy and its standing. We are proud to say that our uh, economy is in growth trajectory. We have been achieving a 6% GDP growth over the last 
a number of years and year on year sustaining that growth. As you can see from the presentation, this compares very strongly when compared both to the Eurozone and to our EU28 partners. Moving on to the next slide, another indicator the, that, that is of importance, of relevance, unemployment. We are amongst the best performance performance on this particular indicator in Europe as well. Practically, we have no unemployment. We have, we have universal employment. As you very well know, while this might be very good news on a national front, when it's an, an investor looking towards a country, this might not be always seen as favorable, because obviously you will need more. Uh, you need you will need HR in order to supplement your business, and the fact that the country as as a, as a is at a stage of universal employment, this might look like it's a hurdle. However, we have been very successful year on year again in attracting and importing talent from all parts of the world, be it from our fellow EU states, but also from third country, um, from third countries, from different parts of the world. And government continues to push in order to improve the visa um, realities, the, the working visa realities, the, the, the entry point realities, um, working with the job authorities in order to facilitate this element. Moving on to other indicators, again, the next slide, employment growth, which is substantial as well. The next slide is the real GDP per capita growth, which obviously retains the positive element that we have seen in, GDP, in the GDP growth. Next slide is the certificates. These elements, uh, these, these names obviously are synonymous with, with industry and uh, you know household names in analyzing economies. And yes, Fitch, Moody's, Standard & Poor's, Scope, the BRS have given us A's. A's, and as you can see in the subtitle, credit rating agencies upgrades. We have been uh, okayed, thumbs up from the different credit rating agencies. And that certificate all obviously gives us, um, you know, um, a good standing and makes us feel um, empowered when we stand in front of you potential investors today as well. Next slide will bring us to something that I have alluded to in the beginning. The, di the diversification of our economy has been one of the most important elements in Malta's resilience, moving from different um, international realities. Even during the 2008 crisis, Malta has uh, withstood that crisis because of a strong banking sector, but also because our risk is diversified. These are the sectors that we that we're proud to present to you today. Yes, aviation, but also education, the international educational services, um, where a very good example it's um, Queen Mary uh, University in of London with its prestigious Barts College of, of Medicine that had, have opened their first non UK campus here in Malta. So when we say education, that is the type of uh, industry we're referring to. The financial services industry, Malta is well known as well um, for that. Also, we, we have a very strong bond with, with the city uh, in London. Fintech comes uh, as a latch on to financial services. Malta has also proved to be avant-gardist in this sector in relation to distributed ledger technologies with a jurisdictional framework which positions Malta amongst the leaders of this particular sub niche in the world. The film industry, you might not know, but there were, there were a number of blockbusters filmed in Malta, starting from names like Munich, Troy, uh, World War Z. Um, you know, uh, you, you should research a bit more about this because you'll find some surprises there. Maritime and logistics are tied. I already alluded to the fact that our geographical positioning is, is crucial for our success. Life sciences and advanced manufacturing might, might be something that you would not know a priori about Malta. But fortunately enough, 
um, after being a British base, most Malta moved from being a British based onto a fully fledged uh, liberal economy where the foundation blocks were manufacturing. And when we say manufacturing, today we speak about the high added value manufacturing. So not anymore about textiles, but much more about semiconductors, chips that are used in your phones. Um, so next to you, you have an iPhone. You might not know, but the, the particular mechanism that recognizes that you have swib, uh, switched from um, landscape to portrait div is developed by a company that is based out of Malta, ST Microelectronics, a very strong player in the semiconductor space. This is not the only story. It is a very uh, pertinent part of the economy, manufacturing. We have uh, the likes of uh, Playmobil, which are, are a synonymous name with plastics. We have ST Microelectronics, Method, Trelleborg. These are important names also in the auto industry, so automotive parts. And uh, another element which brings us then to life sciences is also the sub niche of pharmaceutical production out of Malta, be it active ingredients, um, solid dosage. Um, so that industry is, is very affluent and clear that uh, is part of the Maltese ecosystem, both in product, pr producing um, pharmaceuticals out of Malta, but also for batch release. Touching on life sciences, we're also venturing into the biotech, genome sequencing field, and uh, also nuclear medicine, which also, uh, obviously, uh, as I have just explain, explained, the pharmaceutical industry, the medical device industry, were obviously served as a very good foundation block for the further spurning of the life sciences sector. Then we have our gaming industry. And here I would like to make a difference between something that we're very well known for, which is the betting and gambling industry online. However, we also have a number of very important players in the digital games industry. You might know, for example, the game Angry Birds, which is developed by um, a production house uh, with the name of Exient that has a base both in the UK, but also in Malta. Tourism might be the obvious uh, element that Malta is known for, and that is also doing quite well. But as you, uh, as you can see, we have a number of other industries that form the Maltese cluster. Moving on, the next slide, aviation, which we're here to get uh, in deeper, delve deeper in today. In the five, fine print in this slide, you can see the different sub-niches. The very clear one, as I mentioned, is the maintenance, repair, and overhaul. I'll have a chance to, to delve more on that. Flight uh, and training, flight training and other types of training. Manufacture of aviation components, which is obviously in line with also producers of, of the, the autom autom uh, automate, automotive industry. We also have aviation components. Then we have flight operations and charter management, aircraft handling, and commercial services, which is uh, a sub niche which relates also to our business jet industry. Aircraft registration and operation with competitive uh, fees. The AOC registrations, be it for AOCs and also for aircrafts. Malta is very well known for its maritime registry. However, with time uh, passing, we're, we're managing to establish ourselves as a, a solid jurisdiction also for aircraft registration. Research and innovation, and with a particular note on UAVs, um, it uh, transpires that Malta being an island and being able to also offer cordons that uh, attach land side, but also to, to uh, testing that can be done with drones and UAVs on Maltese territorial waters has become another interesting element. So uh, companies that, that are in the stages of development of their drones and UAVs are also looking at Malta. ICT and software development for the aviation industry. Malta's IT, ICT sector, sector has been always uh, a sector that we, we have been proud of 
and some of its use cases has been in the aviation industry. So uh, systems to, to manage um, airlines, to manage airports, to manage to HR solutions for the aviation industry has been something that, that our IT industry has managed to provide solutions in, in these fields. Back office support and call center operations. We have had a number of such operations, some of them still flourishing until today, which have been a major source of employment for a number, um, for a huge number of motor based individuals. And this is something that you will find a certain expertise in here in Malta as well. I touched upon MROs in the beginning, but obviously I want to focus myself more on the MRO sector. And the, the MRO sector um, has started in Malta because of a, an opportunity that there was uh, that was found uh, between Air Malta, which is the national carrier, alongside back then Lufthansa Technique. And that joint venture in the early 2000s has led then to a creation of uh, a solid infrastructure, a solid ecosystem that today revolves around what we call SAP, Safi Aviation Park. So apart from Lufthansa Technique that today have a, a massive operation out of Malta, it is their third largest MRO facility in Europe, has also attracted other players. Uh, in Malta, for example, we have SR Techniques, um, which obviously those of you who are um, part of the industry and, and clearly delve in the industry every day know of their expertise as well, um, based out of Switzerland with Chinese investment. And SRT is a, also uh, another big name that we have here in Malta. Other, other players which might not be as evident, but which are very important to our cluster include Medavia, who have landing rights um, in, let's say, many different airports in Africa. Medavia have also developed an MRO facility out of Malta. In the helicopter space, we also have certified Rolls-Royce operations here in Malta, and uh, not only what is normally the, the maintenance element, but the cluster that now finds itself in, uh, finds itself in Safi Aviation Park. Um, one can find aesthetics operators and other supplementary operators in order to really have an ecosystem that delivers and provides to the MRO players all they need, um, or at least the majority of services they need out of Malta. So in order to um, move on to the next slide, I'll just give the advantages of the Safi Aviation Park, fully functional airside facility and the cluster uh, environment. And the park compromises areas earmarked for future development as well. We'll touch this about this at the end. And um, the other facilities that one would require in order to operate such uh, an operation. Next slide just uh, an aerial interpretation of the Safi Aviation Park uh, as per plans. And these logos will give you a full picture. So it's a mix, right? The MRO industry, you have business jet <coughs> operators, you have uh, aircraft uh, cosmetics industry, Air Malta is the national carrier. And through these logos, you can really take, take a, a realistic interpretation of what's here on the ground. Simliner Malta has been a recent addition in the sense that it offers training to, to aircraft uh, pilots, thus uh, both our Air Malta uh, captains and, and uh, captains from other uh, players now do not need to fly outside of Malta in order to get their training, but we have the first Simliner facility here in Malta as well. I touched about Air Malta earlier, but the subtitle here gives a more um, the, the, the most updated positioning of Air Malta. So while being the national carrier, Air Malta is looking at serving the region. So Air Malta, after um, a bit of a problematic period, has now emerged successful. It's 
starting to make uh, new profits, new revenues. It's an expansion mode, buying new aircraft, leasing new aircraft, and is looking to have multiple bases in the Mediterranean and positioning itself as the airline of the region. As you might know, the fact that um, you might look at operating out of Malta and the aviation cluster also brings with it other advantages that I would refer to them as jurisdictional advantages. Our tax regime is very advantageous. Our colleagues from uh, Katkuti Kauki will be able to um, delve deeper in, in that element and explain. Uh, yes, we'll do that in the second part of the presentation. Exactly. Then there are other elements. Um, it's good to know that there are 60 double taxation agreements in force that Malta has with other countries. We also have assistance in internationalizing businesses out of Malta. Again, we'll touch on that later. And assistance with education and training of workforce. Next slide. So that uh, we'll try and wrap soon from my end and um, pass on. Uh, to, to our colleagues for, for their presentation. Why Malta? Economic, political and social stability. We are very proud of this particular point and I believe it's also a very important element for whoever is looking uh, into Malta to invest. Stability is crucial. We are blessed with an economy that is doing well. We have a generic understanding between political parties in safeguarding and pushing our economic niches and a social stability meaning that also as uh, when it comes to to employees employees rights and uh, the the interaction of unions many a time it's a constructive interaction rather than a disruptive interaction and we hold that uh, to our advantage strategic location i have mentioned that many a time already our links however our links to the world are is another element that we should harp on in order to give you a clear understanding of Malta. When we say excellent air and sea links, we are not over exaggerating. Our Freeport terminal is the third largest Freeport in the region, in the Mediterranean, as per amount of um, you know, passage of containers. And it's linked with all the main hubs around the world that you would need if you are in the manufacturing industry and obviously Malta being so small, the majority of operators out of Malta would use Malta as a point of um, import for re-export. So importing more basic materials, increasing their value and, and through different processes and then re-export and then re-exporting them to all parts of the world. Our air links, are not to be undervalued as well. Um, it is uh, fair to say, for example, that this summer, next summer, summer 2019, in that particular timing, Malta will have more European links than Heathrow Airport. It might be a bit of a shock, but the level of interconnectedness that Malta has managed to adopt as per air routes is quite substantial a bridge for industry to the EU and Africa, and excellent investment incentive packages, which will come to at the end of, of our discussion today. More why Malta, efficient tech system, the highly skilled individuals that form part of our human resource capital, which are also English speaking, which you'll find very suitable um, for international business, but also because um, of, of, of our cohort that we're discussing with today, yourselves as well, um, it's crucial to have an English speaking uh, human, human capital. Competitive cost structures with low social costs. Yes, we are not as competitive as other jurisdictions potentially in the east of Europe. However, the quality that you'll receive out of Malta will be very comparable to, to the most exigent uh, markets in the world. And when it comes to labor costs, you'll find amongst the most competitive labor costs, uh, especially the amount of tax that you'll have to, to uh, shoulder on behalf of your employees. Malta is very competitive when it comes to that. Excellent quality of life um, for those who, who have been to Malta. Uh, I'm sure that you have experienced firsthand 
the advantages that Malta has in uh, in, in in living in Malta, in the different um, you know the, the tourism element of Malta. Uh, I'm, I might be a bit biased, but I believe that that it's one of the most beautiful places that one can can live in. I leave on to my colleague in order to delve into uh, more detailed elements. Thank you, Anthony. Um, I will also look into some of those points from a boring legal point of view, maybe. <laughs> and uh, But in the meantime, our team is launching the first poll. Um, so the poll is open and would like to hear um, what you think. Uh, the question is, what are the main defining factors when looking for an alternative jurisdiction for your business and you have four options there maintaining relationships with european organizations maintaining existing air service agreements availability of raw material for day-to-day -day operations and others feel free to specify in our private chat we will give you um, a couple of seconds so that you can answer that poll and we'll continue with the second part of the presentation Thank you for participating. Um, we we'll move now to the second part. Um, Malta, again, is an aviation destination, but from a different perspective from the legal and fiscal point of view. Okay, one second. Just a short uh, overview of our firm. Um, we are a business, a business uh, corporate firm that assists clients, investors, mainly um, focused, investor focused business. Um, we have different practices that as provide assistance from a holistic point of view. So we have mergers, mergers and acquisitions, um, uh, speci specifically focused lawyers. We assist in international planning. Um, jets and yachts in, in registrations and specifically authorizations in Malta. We have a specific global citizenship and residency department, which is, is very useful to clients when they are relocating, including the relocation of employees and key persons of the companies. And also an international banking and wealth department that assists clients with the management of their assets and also for financing internationally. We move on to the next slide. Um, what are the implications of a, a, a no-deal no Brexit? And from our experience, of course, this, is, this has been the hot topic throughout, not just the last month, but possibly um, since, since we know of Brexit after the vote. And we have been contacted by a number of players in the industry, in the aviation industry. And from our experience, we see that primarily there are a number of key, key players in the industry that might be affected, including and primarily commercial airlines operating through uh, an air operator certificate obtained in the UK, which would mean that after Brexit, this is no longer a European certificate. Um, of course, the MROs, the European Aircraft Maintenance Repair and Overhaul Providers, um, original, uh, original equipment manufacturers, OMEs, logistic and freight forward providers, training centers, and recruitment agencies specializing in aviation related posts in view of the movement of persons and the possibility of aviation related industries being out of the EU and not having availability of the pool of talent in the EU. So reducing their possibilities of finding the people they need. 
the trend, what our clients uh, have, have been doing or what we have seen happening through um, the people that have contacted us and through us studying also the, the market and reaching out to people in the market. Um, we have seen, of course, a number of commercial airlines operating through an AOC obtained in the UK, converting this to a TCO, a third country operating certificate. Um, it provides a solution, but is not a, a full solution in the sense that a TCO allows uh, the free movement and, and free circulation in the EU, but unlike in the case of the AOC, um, TCO airlines and TCO aircraft may be asked for more information to be able to land, so every member state has the right and the discretion to ask for more information, whilst with an AOC, uh, you have the free circulation without, without any further requirements. Commercial airlines, MROs and other related industry have, um, other related players in the industry have also chosen to move into an EU state to continue enjoying the free movement of goods, services, people and capital. And this is where Malta has played uh, an important role in the last month. The question why Malta would, why, why move to Malta if you decide to move outside of the UK and not to other member states? Um, as we, of course, Malta is a new member since 2004, therefore we, we are part of the Aki Communitaire and we are part of the holistic um, legal setup of the European Union. Part of the Eurozone as well, so our currency is the Euro, and uh, part of the, European, of the single European sky and signatory to a large number of treaty networks, including the Cape Town Convention. However, if we look at these advantages, so to put it, um, these advantages are common practically to almost all other European member states. So what makes Malta special? What makes Malta uh, at the forefront to be considered as a country to move to as part of the European Union? So in this slide, I tried to list specific points that are specific to Malta. So what gives Malta an edge maybe over other European, European Union members in this context. As, as Anthony mentioned earlier, um, we have an effective corporate tax re regime in Malta, which will go into detail in the next slide. There are tax measures and investment aids, which Anthony will, uh, will, uh, will go into and explain later on. Anthony also mentioned that we are connected, we're very well connected to other um, European cities, but also to the North African cities, being at the edge between two continents. Um, this is a very, very important point. We have an approachable authority. Being small, being a small country, um, it, you are able to um, approach the authority with your project and you will, fi you will find a listening ear you will find uh, an authority that, that is ready to, to work on the project, um, of course, subject and within the parameters of European law. The feasibility of costs and fees, so compared to other European countries, um, our fees and costs for service providers for applications are feasible, are, 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 are um, compar comparatively advantageous. And of course, we have a reputable uh, flag as a certified state with FA category one rating. And this is a, a slide on connectivity and logistics, which Anthony mentioned. Um, he mentioned the, the, the Freeport, which is the largest, uh, in, uh, the third largest in the Mediterranean. Um, we have an oil airport with, that has the second best, is the second best airport in Europe with over 4 million passengers a year. And, the location, as we said, is in the center of the Mediterranean. What I wanted to point out is the effect that this has on businesses, working with businesses on a day-to-day -day basis. We have noticed that this would mean in practice that because of good connectivity, there is no need for large stock keeping when, whilst working in and out of Malta. Um, there is efficient delivery of parts and supplies when needed, and therefore there is also cost-effective delivery because of the connections. These are practical aspects that we have experienced with our clients. 
As, as many of you might, might know, we are a next English colony. Like the English, we love tea, but that's not the only thing we have in common with, with the English, with the British. Um, our law, especially our procedural law, is based on the English common law. Our, one of our official languages is English, the other being Maltese. We are a member of the Commonwealth and there is bilateral trade and investment treaties in place. So the connection with the British territory has always been very close and it has remained so even after Malta gained independence in 1964. This is the overall aspect of how we assist clients um, with relocation or with setting up or con expanding their business in Malta. We can provide corporate and tax planning, preparation of legal documentation and relocation assistance. Of course, the acquisition of any relevant licenses, including AOCs, correspondence with the relevant authorities in Malta, um, and also the practical aspect of obtaining pre um, premises here, um, developing your project via JV partners or pro and project management. We, are, we try to be hands-on and be part of the project team, not just from the legal point of view, but also from the practical point of view. Um, we're, we're now moving to the text part. Um, before starting this new part, um, we're going to launch the second poll that we have for today, the second and last. Um, uh, so we will give you another 30 seconds to be able to answer to this poll. The second question asks, why would Malta best offer a key post Brexit solu solution? And you have three options, an accessible regulator and ease in setting up your business in Malta. Malta's advantages tax system and incentives offered by Maltese government authorities. I would appreciate if you can answer and then we'll continue in 30 seconds. So let's start off now with the, the text system and we will look into the position of um, corporate tax in Malta. But before going to that, let's, let me um, list the nose of Malta. And these are what we usually refer to as the nice nose. We have no withholding tax on dividends, interest and royalties, no capital wealth taxes, no entry or exit tax on shift of residence or domicile and no dividend taxes. Let's look at a typical structure and um, for you to also understand how the corporate tax regime works in, in, in Malta. Um, we have a company here, which usually is the trading company. So the, the company doing uh, the, the, the trade either in, in aviation or possibly in other areas. Um, that company is subject in Malta to 35% corporate tax. So in this example, if the company at the end of the financial year after the audited financial statement has made a profit and net income of 100,000, 35,000 of that 100,000 will be payable in tax in corporate tax to the Inland Revenue Department in Malta to our taxman. The shareholder has an entitlement of, uh, of a refund depending on his domicile and residence status. Um, the, the shareholder is entitled to a 30% of the 35% paid by the company on distribution of dividends. So if, the hundred, if we had 100K, 100,000 net, net, net profit, 35,000 were paid to the, the, the tax department, 65,000 were distributed to the shareholder uh, as, as dividends. The shareholder is entitled, therefore, to a 30% refund 
so out of the 35, he is getting 30, 30 back for an accumulation of 95% in, in, in the shareholders' hands, having therefore a net effective tax of 5%. This is another typical structure in Malta. It's, it works in much the same manner like the, the, the structure we have seen together before. You have the operating company, which is the company doing the business. What is different from the other one is that we have interposed here a, a, another company in Malta, what we are calling a holding company, so an asset holder. In this case, the system will operate in the same manner. So the, the operating company, the trading company will pay its net, its corporate tax on its net income to the government department, to the tax person, and there will be distribution of dividends. And the 95% will be collected in the holding company on the refund claim after the payment of tax and distribution of dividends. In this case, we have a situation where the dividend and the refund are mixed in the holding company. And at the holding company level, there is no further tax in Malta. The advantage is that in this case, we are, have no implications from foreign jurisdictions in that we have uh, the, the collection of the dividends and the refund in, in a multi scenario. Um, whilst in, in the previous scenario, we had to look at, at, at the shareholders' tax position to be able to determine what is the next step from a tax point of view. This, this holding company, therefore, defers the, the distribution of dividends in the name of the shareholder and also assists with, with, planning, with planning and, and investment. It, it can be also be used as an asset holder and to hold other investments in Malta and abroad. This is a summary of what we have just discussed. So the, as we saw in the previous slide, the company, the trading company, has a corporate tax of 35%. Was the shareholder, whether it's the shareholder directly, the ultimate beneficial owner, or alternatively, an, an interposed holding company or any other entity in or outside Malta, has would, would have the right of tax refunds up to 30%, resulting in a 5% net effective tax. There is also the possibility of including foundations and trusts in our structure. Um, we have foundations based on our civil law, but as we explained earlier, we have a good chunk of our law based on common law, and we also have adopted the trust model. All, all, the, all, all our, our structures are compliant with EU law, and uh, being part of the EU, there is also a EU VAT free trading with EU suppliers and also benefiting from the EU trade agreements. Some figures, the minimum share capital to form a company in Malta is 1,250. In cases where we have a licensed entity, of course, there might be specific laws, special laws that require higher share capital depending on the activity that the client wants to set up. You can have corporate directors as well as physical directors on a Malta company. The paid up share capital can be 20%, so 250 out of the 1,250. The currency of the capital can be any. You can have a VAT registration being a company in the EU. The nationality of directors is there is no there is no limitation, so any can any, any person can be a director of a Malta company. The refunds are received within 14 days, the refunds were mentioning in the previous slides, and the time to register a company in Malta is practically in 24 hours. Now we go back to the government incentives, um, which are operated by Malta Enterprise. 
Anthony will take us through the last few slides, also pointing out the, the, the features of the different incentives. Thank you. Let's move on to our other incentives. So basically, when Malt Enterprise discusses with incoming clients the kind of support that we offer, we'll, we'd like to present it as support that uh, is starting at the initiation point. However, it's a trip a voyage that we embark on with the company that is looking, is looking to invest in Malta and will be able to potentially assist at different stages of the development of that particular company. I will uh, um, take into consideration that the, maybe the majority of those who are present to this webinar will not be startups because also of the industry per se. And let's think about um, uh, a, a company that is already in a profit making stage. The simple explanation of the investment aid tax credits that we are uh, that you can look at in, on this particular slide is the fact that over and above the 5% effective tax paid in Malta by the shareholders, one can look at an even more favorable taxation reality. Through a system of tax credits, Malta Enterprise can help you to further decrease your tax bill in order to, in certain circumstances, even have a 0% tax reality for a period of time. This is um, worked, uh, the workings of, of these incentives depend on how small or large the uh, entity under uh, discussion would be, because there are uh, different levels of aid intensity. Uh, therefore, if you are uh, what falls in the category of a small business, you will be looking at an aid intensity of 30% of your capital expenditure or your wage bill, which can be given back as form of a tax credit. If you're a medium entity, therefore the small entity would be um, between zero and 50 employees. The medium entity, the medium sized entity would be fall between 50 and 250 employees with uh, a revenue that doesn't surpass the 10 million mark. There you would be looking at 10 at 20 percent um, of aid intensity if you're a larger company having more than 250 employees there will be a 10 percent aid intensity we will be able to provide also links to our guidelines the the guidelines to our incentives in order to go down to the details of any of these incentives however the overarching story is that through multi enterprise when applying successfully for this particular incentive, you will be able to further improve your taxation reality out of Malta. There will be companies that are looking for assistance. And there, in, in this, uh, in this, on this point, we have a number of tools. We can discuss soft loans, therefore you'll be able to get a loan through Malta Enterprise as well. There are elements of loan guarantees or interest rate subsidies where Malta Enterprise becomes a partner of the company in the sense that it would help in making the a commercial loan uh, more favorable through particular assistance. An next incentive that one can discuss then focuses on R&D. There are a number of different schemes that would help an incoming business that focuses on R&D that can help that where we can help um, support with different strategies and in different costs that would be pertinent um, to the particular um, uh, company looking at investing in Malta. There are uh, the details that we will be able to refer to you um, via particular links, but in order for expediency, I will leave this um, only to that generic element. Moving on to startup finance. If then the company that is under discussion is not a mature company, which is cash rich, but is a startup, you can look at a loan mechanism. A loan mechanism of up to 200,000 euros. That loan, you would be able to access it, but then uh, pay it back over a period of 10 years 
with a starting in, of uh, the starting interest rate of three percent and there are three different ways how to make use of this loan one of them is by increasing your paid up share capital and then we would be able to um, uh, match that increase one is to one there is another route which is the matching of crowdfunding exercises and the last route would be multi-enterprise covering with a loan the costs incurred for tangible immovable um, assets the next incentive that we'd like to discuss is the bd grant what we refer to as the bd grant the business development and continuity grant um, as it's presented it is now a grant not a loan however this grant would be able to be discussed after we see that the comp particular company is already doing development in Malta in the sense that it has started its operation and is in growth uh, trajectory imagine a manufacturing company that wants to embark on a new line of product and needs new machinery then you would we, you would be able to apply for a BD grant skills are crucial and Malta enterprise gives skills development its due weight and as you can see through this particular incentive the skills development scheme the company on the question can benefit up to up to a million euros in assistance when it is further improving and training its employees and their skills so basically um, very quickly we went through the different type of incentives multi enterprise has at least 30 different products incentives but uh, we believe that these were the most pertinent that uh, we can look at today i'll leave it back to to silvana in order to now coming to to wrap off thank you anthony that is all we had prepared for you this is question time so please if you have any questions send them in the chat box and we will reply to them now uh, if, if not uh, we Please feel free also to send after this presentation and we will, we will answer you by email. We definitely scratched the surface today, Anthony. Yes, there yes, There is yes. a lot of more information and we would be able to tailor make the answers as well to answers their feedback. To, to, any, to any prospective um, uh, investment or, or, or company that might need information. Silvana, on the last slide, uh, on your backdrop, we're seeing the skyline of uh, part of the Maltese Islands. We always find it very um, pertinent and crucial to recommend whoever to whoever has uh, has been attending to this um, webinar to come and visit Malta. It's one thing for us to describe the incentives and the opportunities, but it's a completely other reality for whoever is tuned in with us to come down and experience it firsthand as multi enterprise would be happy to help you set up the not just the entity but set up a, a visit a reconnaissance visit let's say and help you um, fit in the required meetings in order for you to take a more realistic interpretation of what we have here on the ground of the diversified economy that is hosted here in malta and we look forward to host as many of uh, you dear attendees here in Malta as soon as possible. In fact, Anthony, I we just received one of the questions and it's, it's uh, the, the question asks in a practical manner, what would happen if one would want to approach Malta Enterprise for any of the incentives that you described? Perfect. That's a very pertinent question. Um, we will leave also the details, our email address details and, and our phone numbers to uh, the different individuals that are, that are with us today and um, we're easy ac easily accessible also on linkedin and all on all other uh, professional so social networks in order to have a more convenient and direct relationship built with our prospective uh, clients um, it will entail looking at those incentives that we discussed and identifying which ones are suitable for which individual and start a process of an application form through the different guidelines and it depends on which incentive we're discussing some of them would be um, based on eligibility others will have uh, will would go to an, an internal um, screening up to a board of directors meeting where a decision will be taken 
um, either to uh, reject, but hopefully to accept the giving of that particular incentive with the different conditions needed. And then that would mean the start of a relationship with us as a, as a multi enterprise through the, the signing of a letter of intent. And as you very well know, it would be the start of a, a relationship because from signing a paper onto having an effective entity on the ground, employing people and reaching its targets, it's a, it's a long journey, a journey that we are happy to be uh, partners in with our uh, potential investors. And I'm happy to, to, to help as much as I can. We received other two short questions. The first asks whether um, there are any limitations on who can be uh, the shareholder of, of, a, of a company in Malta, of a project in Malta. There are no limitations on shareholders in general. There might be some particular requirements depending on the particular industry. The second, the second question asks whether the, the tax structure, the, the, the corporate tax structure that we discussed before applies in all cases. Generally, it applies for trading companies that have uh, with, with, with uh, shareholders that fulfill the requirements. However, our tax team looks at the particular project in itself and would provide tax planning also looking at the holistic picture internationally. So we will always look at the project individually and provide tailor-made advice. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Savannah, for this opportunity and thank you to Kat Kutikauke for the for this opportunity for the, the, the good structuring of, of this event and we look forward to host any of those interested from, from, this web, from this webinar to come down to Malta and start an active collaboration with Malta. Feel free to contact us by email and we will get back to you with, with answers to your questions. Thank you very much and have a good evening.